Hi guys, thanks for joining. My name is Tessa. I work here in Natural Encounters and today's special event is going to be meeting Curly the Sloth. So he is a Linnaeus two-toed sloth and you guys are going to get to meet him up close and personal which is really special because he is an ambassador animal so you don't usually get to see him. He doesn't usually live on an exhibit. So he is making his way out of his crate there. He's got one hand out. He's almost fully committed. <laughs> So you might notice on that claw that he does have on the branch there, there are two toes on that front foot there. So he is a two-toed sloth. So now all sloths have three toes on their back feet, but two-toed sloths have two toes on the front feet, whereas three-toed sloths have three toes on the front feet. <laughs> so he's gonna get some of his favorite foods right now coming out so I can show you guys a close-up of some of the stuff that he gets. So this is only part of his diet. He eats a lot. But these are his favorite items so that he's really enticed to come out. Um, so there's greens, there's grapes, there's some cucumber, or zucchini, there's steamed yam, and his very favorite is hard-boiled egg. <laughs> so once he makes his way out there, you'll get to see him in his full glory. He is a very big sloth. He is around 24 pounds. And the Linnaeus, a two-toed sloth, is one of the bigger species of sloth. If you've ever seen photos or in person of three-toed sloth, they are a lot smaller, but they do live around similar areas. So the Linnaeus two-toed sloth is native to northern areas of South America, especially around the tropical rainforests like the Amazon, um, whereas three-toed sloths are native to Central America as well as South America. So his hands there you can see are hooked. So they are built for hanging upside down. This is a natural position for him. This is a relaxed position. It doesn't take any extra energy for him to hang upside down. So his feet, as well as his claws, they are hooked, kind of like a little clothes hanger maybe is a good example. <laughs> so they will always be hanging on to that branch, doesn't take any extra energy. Another adaptation for living upside down that's really cool is their organs are actually attached to their rib cage. So that way they don't crush their lungs when they're upside down. Teresa asks, how old is he? He is currently 24 years old, but next month on July 22nd is his birthday, so he will be the big 25. So the food that he is getting right now may take up to three weeks for him to actually digest. So everything is very slow about sloths. Their metabolism is very slow mostly because they eat roughage in the wild that takes a long time for them to digest. Tori asks, can they swim? If so, how fast? That's a great question. You may have seen the Planet Earth episode in which they um, are swimming, so they can swim in the wild. So to travel from tree to tree or to find more food or maybe a mate, sometimes it's a lot faster for them to go through the water instead of trying to crawl on the ground dragging with their arms and they actually swim a decently fast pace, definitely a lot faster than they crawl on the ground. <laughs> Curly, though, is not as big of a fan of water. We've given him water bowls, water things, pools to try and sit in. He's not as interested. Dominic asks, how does algae grow on fur? That's a great question. So in the wild, they're sitting up in the trees and they're sitting very still. And in the rainforest, it's very wet. So it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. So a win-win situation for the algae and for the sloth. The algae gets a safe place to grow on their fur and the sloth gets some camouflage from that algae, that moist algae growing on their fur. Melinda asks, are they friendly? I like to think Curly's pretty friendly. He knows that we are safe. Uh, we're gonna give him food. We're always gonna let him have a choice, a say in what he does with us here. Um, but otherwise, in terms of if they live in social groups, anything like that, no, they are solitary animals. They only come together to breed. He's got a little egg residue on his mouth there. <laughs> Linda asks, are they endangered? So the Linnaeus two-toed sloth specifically is not endangered, but many other species of sloth, especially three-toed sloths, um, certain species, pygmy three-toed sloth, they are um, not doing as well mostly due to losing their habitat, so deforestation of rainforests. M asks, what's their lifespan? So Curly here, he's 24, and it's said that they will live um, to about their 30s, mid-30s, um, but we do have a second sloth here, uh, Hoffman's two-toed sloth, 
who is over 45. So she's proof that they can live a little longer. There he is, coming all the way out. Deborah asks, do they have any predators? Yes, um, so in the jungle, mostly it would be when they go to the ground um, is when they would be most preyed upon by jaguars, but also when they're in the trees, they could be preyed upon by harpy eagles, believe it or not. There you go, now we have them fully out. <laughs> He says no to the greens. <laughs> Liam asks, what's the difference between a two-toed sloth and a three-toed sloth? Oh, this is perfect. You can see all his toes on the branch there. So you see his front legs there have two toes, whereas his back feet there have three toes. So every species of sloth has three toes on their back legs. But a two-toed sloth like Curly has two on the front. But if you were to see a three-toed sloth, the ones that are smaller and have the dark eye, eye markings, they have three toes on their front feet. It's a good question. Garolyn asks, what's Curly's favorite food? So he definitely used to really love his grapes and they're still a high value for him. But we thought we might introduce a little more protein to his diet and add some hard boiled egg. We weren't sure if he would like it and turns out he is obsessed with it. He really loves his hard boiled egg, which is what he's getting right now. <laughs> Pax asked, was he born in the wild or the zoo? So he actually came to us from a previous zoo. He was born at Lincoln Children's Zoo. And he came to us around, I wanna say five or six years ago. So zoos breeding sloths means that we would never need to take any from the wild. Stacy asked, how long can their nails grow? So his are pretty full grown here. Um, and it's really cool, their nails are actually a bone cov covered in a sheath of keratin. So they're not entirely keratin. So if we needed to file them down a bit, we just have to be careful not to go too far. And we do do that sometimes, we do a little sloth spa day and sometimes we'll rub some lotion on his paw pads if they look a little dry. <laughs> Krista asks, do you guys do feed the sloth visits? Yes, we do. So Curly is an ambassador, so he does not usually live on an exhibit where you can see him, unlike Succotash, our sloth on exhibit. So what he does instead is special events like this, or Feast with the Beast, or his main thing are behind the scene tours that you guys can purchase online on our website, houstonzoo.org. And then you guys will get to see him up close, maybe even feed him. Stephanie asks, is he soft? So his fur is surprisingly a little more coarse than you would think, and the reason behind that is it's actually water resistant. So you also might see that his fur is growing down his body from the stomach down, so that also helps repel water. And he does have a lot of fur, he's very thick. Amy, can you hug sloths? I would not want to hug Curly. You can see right now just how big he is and how strong he is. So also sloths don't really like touch all that much. Um, they're unlike dogs. They kind of prefer to be solitary. <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend hugging them. Jelena asks, will he get bigger? Uh, nope, he is full grown. So this is as big as he will get. But for his species, he is also a little large. He's a pretty big boy, so around 24 pounds. Most of that fur. <laughs> Fabiola asks, do you bathe him? Um, no, he mostly keeps clean by himself, especially since he's not in the rainforest, doesn't get all that algae growing on him. But we have uh, offered to give him a bit of a mist before, since he is a rainforest animal. He did not like that. <laughs> so no baths for Curly. Jackie asks, who is slower, a turtle or a sloth? A sloth can actually be pretty fast when they need to, so if they're trying to escape from a predator or anything like that, I'd probably put my money on the sloth. 
you can see how strong he is there. They can hang from just their back two feet. So he's being uh, quite active, so we're going to give him the choice here. He has his crate, which is what he sleeps in. It's his safe space. And it's also what he's trained to show us if he wants to leave then he can enter the crate, so everything is always Curly's choice. Thank you guys for tuning in. Curly's decided that he's going to go and take a nap. Please join us next Wednesday um, when we will have another Bringing the Zoo to You at 11. And at 11.30, we will have our Camp Zufari on my 20. You can watch that. And thank you guys so much for meeting Curly. And please do come to the zoo if you can. Uh, we are selling tickets online only. So do try and come if you can, but if you'd rather support the zoo and stay at home, we do have our option at HoustonZoo.org. You can donate to our emergency zoo fund. Thank you guys.